morning to everyone. Just a few announcements, somewhat repetitive from last week, but just as a reminder, there will be a fall festival today at the New Hope Baptist Church. 12 noon to 4 p.m. Um, Spindle Tap, 10, 622 Hirsch Road, here in Houston. The events will include trunk or treating, interactive games, live music, Halloween egg hunt, different, free giveaways, hot dogs for the kids, plus food trucks, vendors, and more. Um, for ages 12 and under, there, uh, there will be also additional charges if you do the, the food trucks and uh, some of the other events. Let's remember the Dunamis Revival Fire Conference. That's to be held November 7th, 8th, and 9th. Um, there is free interest, but pre-registration is required. That's where doctors uh, and pastors Paul and Becky Inche will be um, hosting that. That's the Dumas International Gospel Center. Hilton Houston North, 12,400 Greens Point Drive here in Houston. Let's also remember, Brother and Sister Calvin and Angel Williams, they will be honored on for 25 years of ministry on this Friday, November the 4th, at the evening service of the ministry meeting at Houston First Church of God. This is where I all of you who want to come and celebrate with us. So let's give them a <laughs> time. 25 years of service to God is to be celebrated and appreciate it. Let's remember our Wednesday night service. Also um, on our Zoom, I should say Bible study, 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday night. We have all of the information here for you. And also your $20 for your uh, like Thanksgiving basket. We're asking you to go ahead and try and get those things in. Uh, your last day for the Thanksgiving baskets will be November 4th. So just remember, uh, keep that on your on your your calendars to, calendars to make sure that you get that taken care of. And we're asking the men, the MCG, and the CWC to participate. I have a point for you guys um, this morning. We have a lot of evil in the world right now, and it kind of hit me this morning that we. Are going to experience this probably for a little while until the Lord says it's the same that we don't need to do it anymore and do it anymore. But we have to stay steadfast and unmoved because if we continue to hold on to what the Lord has given us our prayer, our faith, then we'll get through. We can't change others, maybe. But we can't change ourselves, and we can change our thoughts. It says, deliverance from evil. The lightning in my room told me that God was near, the quaking and affirmation that the one held fear. Respectful fear of a loving father, nurturing, training, no need to holler. If only one listens between the silence of the scare, strings, and loving value then we can truly understand love with temperance of God's plan. So just remember, he has a plan. We may not see it, we may not know what it is yet, but he has a plan. And that plan is working itself out. He's moving it through the channels and the, and the little dips and curves and the hurdles that are happening right now. But he has a plan. Respectful fear of a loving father. Just know that he is on. He is definitely in control. No matter what we try to do, what we try to say, how we try to handle things on our own, he's going to take care of it in the end. So, my last words to everybody is: continue with the faith. Continue to know that God is in control. 
he's going to handle the situation. And he should be doing his job. Oh, Angela Calvin, uh, 7? Is it 7 p.m.? 6.30? 6.30. I think it's 6.30. Is it 6 30? I'm gonna check. Okay. Give, give me a second, you all. Let me check. I, I have it here. It is 6 30 p.m. So for those of you who will go out and support, just remember 6 30 p.m. on Friday, November the 4th. And if all parts are clear, please cover yourselves accordingly. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I think you meant to say that we have to have $20 by November 6th. Did I say four? I'm sorry, thank you. November the 6th. November 6th for your $20. Thank you, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. For those announcements and on this morning. And uh, we just give God thanks and praise. We want to welcome the Facebook Live as well this morning, and we thank God for all of you who have joined us. I also want to thank the Facebook Church Hopper family too, those that um, go all over the uh, Facebook, like, like, we, like we sometimes still do because of the pandemic when, when uh, the church doors were closed. Um, we, uh, we watch different ministries, and so those that will hop in, we thank you for joining us. Those that will stay, we appreciate you, and thank you for joining us. This morning, and those that are in the, in the sanctuary, we thank you, and um, have some more of my family here, more of my family, my uh, cousin's daughter's children here, my my cousin uh, Belma, her grandson, her great grandson, wait, hold on, yeah, great grandson, sorry, I gotta get, I gotta get, <laughs> gotta get together, so I have two of them here this morning. Yes. They're already making themselves at home. We mm -hmm. might have a piano player over here. Home here one day or something like that. So yeah. thank them for being here this morning. Mm -hmm. So we thank God for all of you being present today and pray that you'll be blessed for what you experience. And this time is crazy. We'll come home with something that happens for the work. Uh, God bless you. You will receive the anointing of all the
Mark chapter 4, verse 25, reading again from the King James Version, and reading on the same day, <laughs> when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, he took them along, along in the boat, as he was. Somebody say, as he was. As he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filled. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow, and they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be? That even the wind and the sea obey him. This morning I read this Psalm number 40, verses 5 to 10, and Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. It was just the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of the eternal word. I'm going to share with us from our thing, the goodness experience of ourselves today is. Let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless you today. We thank you and we praise you for all your goodness and your kindness to us. Yes. Now, Father, we need you. Yes. We need you in the midst of all that we're facing in life. Uh -huh. We pray today in the name of Jesus that you would send a single spirit to bless us today in a powerful way. And we pray that the words of my mouth, the message of my heart, May it be acceptable in my sight. Oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. Yes, he's all blessed in Jesus' sweet name. We pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our subject today is the good news experience. Let's <laughs> keep on going. As we say from time to time when we share this theme, the good news experience. We know many times when the news comes on, the first thing is usually bad news. Mm -hmm. Begin with some level of tragedy or trauma in the world. Someone tragically died, or in the house fire, or apartment fire, or accident on the freeway, and some drama, war, rumors of wars around the world. Yes. I want us to know today that there is good news in the world, amen? Yes. And the good news, the good news is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Jesus died on the cross and rose again that our sins might be forgiven. Yes. And the text that we read in the Old Testament, the Psalm number 40, it says it like this. It says, Many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works <laughs> which you have done. Oh, we want to start with some good news, eh? Amen. And your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you, Lord. If I will declare and speak of them, they are more than can be known. In other words, if you start to count how many ways God has been good to you, there will not be enough time, eh? You wouldn't be able to put them all in order, amen? amen. So I want us today to reflect on the goodness of God today, amen? amen. I know there are difficult times all around us. There are people who are going through tragedy and trauma and trials, even as we speak this morning. Uh, but I want us today to know that there's still good news. Yes, <laughs> that Jesus loves us. Amen. Every once in a while, I listen to these singers saying how Jesus loves me. This I know. From the Bible, <laughs> tells me. So little ones in him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. We still need to know that, that Jesus loves us. Amen? Amen? There's good news in the world today. So it says, a sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears are open. Burn off and sit off and you did not require. Then I said, behold, I come, and the scroll of the book is written with me. I delight to do your will, O oh my God, and your love in my heart. So we know that they're speaking of Jesus coming into the world. But also I want to realize that, that Jesus, he gave a sacrifice and service when he came into the world. And you and I need to follow that example so that we can share, or take the sacrifice of sharing the good news, amen? amen. Because when the good news is shared, uh, good things can happen. For it says, I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness and greatest sin. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips. Oh Lord, you yourself know. Are we willing to testify that we have shared the good things that God has done in our lives? Yes. So that somebody else can know that God is still a good God? Yes. It's up to you and me to be those, those witnesses, those living witnesses. 
There was a while in here, a uh, singer, particularly quartet singer, say, I'm a living witness. <laughs> How good God has been to me. How good God can be in this world. So I want to build living witnesses today who can tell the world that God is good. I have not hidden your writing in my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. Has God been faithful to you today? Even through all that we face, God is a faithful God. He said, the songwriter said, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Great is his faithfulness. We want to see God's faithfulness to know and share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, let me the text. Come from Mark's gospel, Mark chapter 4 today. And let me say Mark's gospel written that we might see Jesus' life of service and sacrifice. In our world today, that's what we need more. We need more people who will be willing to serve somebody. Amen. Martin Luther King Jr. is famous for saying that uh, you don't need a degree to help somebody. You don't need a degree to be great. But when you serve and you love your fellow man, that's how you can be great in society and the world. We uh, ascribe greatness to great athletes uh, and politicians, but the, 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 some of the best things that happen in the world is the ordinary people who love their neighbor as themselves. Amen. So we're going to spend our lives in service and sacrifice to humanity. That will spread the good news experience, amen? People see uh, ordinary people like you and me doing great things in the world. Jesus gave his life of service and sacrifice. And now text today, we see Jesus at a whole other level of service and sacrifice, uh, encouraging and being a witness and an example to go his disciples that the good news of the gospel must be shared, amen? Through all of life's ups and downs. And, and in this text, we see one of the most famous, famous passages and stories in the New Testament. When Jesus calmed the storm, you see, amen? amen. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, beginning at verse 35. There are three things in this text today. And we think about our subject, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. The text describes the time when Jesus was ready to tell the disciples to go over to the other side. Because there was more work for them to do. On the other side of the lake, amen? amen. And uh, as I studied the text and, and the preparation for this message today, uh, I knew this story before getting to it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in our lives, we, we, we close up our mind and just look for what we've already seen. And, but it's, it's different in the text, it's apparent in the text, but I want to lift it up today to see that Jesus is tired. Yes, okay. Help me hold it up. He was a tired man, he had, he had worked. For others, all day long. Amen, somebody. Yeah. And sometimes in our lives, in our Christian experience, <laughs> sometimes we get tired along the way. Right. I'm talking about the good news experience. Let's keep on going. And I want to say today in this text that some people have gotten tired of the church. Tired of ministry. Tired of serving God. And tired of waiting on God to do the things that they want Him to do. But today, I want to say to Shakedale and to all you who are listening, let's keep on going today. Regardless of what other people might do or say, I want us to be those people who will keep on going because God has great things ahead of us. Amen? If we don't throw the time. <laughs> if we don't quit. If we don't sit on the sideline and say, let somebody else do it. But I want to be those people who are willing to say, let's keep on going. There are three things in this text I want to say today. And the first thing is, let's go with things as they are. Let's go with things as they are. Look at the text. The first says in, in, Luke, in Mark chapter 4 verse 35, on the same day, when the evening had come, <laughs> He said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in boat. As he was, somebody said, as he was. And other little boats were also with him. I want you to see that Jesus, he had been working all day. He, had been, he explained the parable of the sword and the sea. He endured the, the slander of the Pharisees and, and how they, they criticized him. But he still said, let us go to the other side. He didn't take a break, didn't go on vacation, didn't go away, but he said, let us go to the other side. Now I want to see today that sometimes when things are as they are, we want to start making excuses. Help me on the door. 
want to find a reason to stop going. I want to find a reason to do something else. But I wasn't see today that Jesus, he decided, even as things were, to keep on going. I want to say to somebody today, don't let excuses get in the way. And I know there are times in our life when we're going through great trials and tribulations. I'm not talking about those things. <laughs> I'm talking about the little things that we allow to get in our way. That stop us from going and doing the things that God has called and assigned us to do. Amen? Let's keep on going. Let's go with things as they are. Jesus did not take a break. He kept on going. He told the disciples, let us. <laughs> not let me go. Help me only go. Because there are all things that Jesus and God can do by himself. He don't need any help, amen? He has all power in his hand. Isn't that what Jesus said when he rose in the grave? That God has given him all authority and all power in his hand? And many times throughout the scripture, God has said, you know, is there anything too hard for God? But I want you to see that God wants to use you and I in his service, in his kingdom, Amen. So let's go with things as they are. Jesus spent the whole day working and serving and helping and doing, and yet he still was willing to keep on going. Amen. And I want you and I to be those people who won't let Jesus go by himself. Help me, Holy Ghost. But be willing to say, Lord, I'll go with you uh, in this journey. Amen. Let's go with things as they are. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 says, In everything, give thanks. Uh, but this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In other words, right now, whatever's going on, this is God's will for your life. He does not want you to quit, don't want you to throw in the towel, don't want you to give up, but he wants you to be strong in the Lord uh, and in the power of his might, amen? Because sometimes our strength wears where out, amen? Our strength can wear away sometimes, amen? But I want to realize that we can keep on Go on, amen. amen. Let us go with things as they are. Amen. The second thing I want to say in this text today is let's go in the middle of the storm. Amen. Let's go huh. in the middle of the storm. Look at Mark chapter 4, verse 37 it says, And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filled. But he was in the stern asleep right. on a pillow. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Right. Mm -hmm. I want you to see sometimes in life in the middle of a storm, one thing piles on top of another. And it seems like so many things are happening at one time, and it, and it seems like uh, there's no hope for the future. The word and kept showing up. They were in the storm. They were, they were together, but they were in the storm. There were, there were other boats who were along with them, but they were in the storm. And Jesus was with them. Was with them. Amen, somebody. Amen. Jesus was with them in the storm. But the text says he was asleep on a pillow. <laughs> I want you to see today that, that even in the midst of a storm, you don't always have to panic and be afraid. Sometimes, if you just lay down and go to sleep, the storm will pass over. Amen? Amen. Somebody told the song, the storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. So Jesus didn't allow the storm to stop them from going where they were going. But the disciples said, Master, the storm of David, do you not care that we are perishing? Sometimes we over exaggerate stuff. In the middle of the storm. Sometimes we make it bigger than it really is. Amen? But the, we got to remember, we have to remember that Jesus is with us. He is with us in the middle of the storm. Yes, the disciples, they were there together. Yes, there were other folks around. But I want you to remember that, that, that Jesus was also there with them in the storm. And we don't have to be afraid. We have, we have somebody we can go to. The good news is that they went to the right person. Amen. Who do you go to in the middle of the storm? Let's go even in the middle of the storm. 
First Peter chapter 4, verse 12 says, Beloved, do not think it strange. Because there's a fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering. Yes, yes, yes. That when his glory is revealed, <laughs> you also will be glad with exceeding joy. Tell me to realize that sometimes the storm is going to reveal that God is still good. All right. That God is still with you. That God is still present. He's still able to help you through the storm. Amen. Amen. Nobody likes the storm. The storm, you know, we hear the, the, the lightning flash and the thunder roll and we're all uncomfortable. But I want you to know that God is still with you. Remember that Jesus is there. Uh, today we don't always, we don't get to see him with our natural life. We can feel him in our hearts. If we would invite him again to our lives, invite him into our storm, invite him to our circumstances and situations, we need to remember he is there. And when we make it through this storm, we will see the glory of God revealed. Amen. Let's go in the middle of the storm. The third thing, the last thing I'm going to say in this text this morning is let's go and experience a miracle. Let's go and experience a miracle. Verse 39 says, Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be? That even the wind and the sea obey me. I want you to see today that giving up is not the right decision. Throwing a towel is not the right decision. Staying at home is not the right decision. They know somebody. Staying away is not the right decision. Sometimes in the storm, people begin to, to fall away. And fall back and, and say, well, you know, I'm not going to go anymore. You know, I'm going through this stormy time in my life. and I've got all these problems. But that's not the right time for you to give up on God. I want us to decide that no matter what's going on in our lives, we're going to choose to keep on going and follow Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Because we see the disciples, if they would have stayed on the other side, they would have missed going through the storm with Jesus. And not only that, they would have missed seeing one of the greatest miracles of the New Testament. The Bible says that then, <laughs> Jesus arose from his sleep. He rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. Do you want to know that God can still do it? Do you want to know if God is still able? Do you want to know that He can make a way out of nowhere? And you got to keep on going because that's where you find your miracles, isn't it? You find your miracle when you refuse to give up on God. You better say it. <laughs> when you trust Him, no matter how it looks. When you believe in God, no matter what the adversary has said to you. Because the adversary is good at saying, it's over for you now. This is the last time and you'll never make it. But today, I want you to realize that if you believe in God and hold on to Him in faith, He has a way of having you make it through the storm. And enable you to experience something you've never seen before. You can see a mirror. The Bible says, He just said, peace. He didn't have a long dissertation or a PhD paper. No, he just said, peace, be still. I don't want you today to understand, it don't take a whole lot for God to do a miracle. But you believing and calling on his name, amen? But if you call on the name of the Lord, he can do great things, amen? He can help you through a difficult time, a, a storm in your life. And the Bible says, but he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you so that you have no faith? And today I want to have faith in God today. I know storms are not always easy to go through. And the storm is not always talking about wind and rain, hurricanes and tornadoes, but it's talking about the storm that happened to you in your life, amen? A uh, unplanned sickness, a uh, uh, car accident, a uh, trouble, a trial. Those are the storms we face in life. Yeah. I don't want you to give up on God in the storm. I want you to hold on to God in the storm, amen? Because that's the just right time for God to show up and perform a miracle in your life. 
I want you to believe that God can do anything, amen? Keep trusting in Him no matter what the circumstances look like. And call on the name of the Lord, amen? amen. Uh, if, you, if, if, if the good is in the text, you can wake up God and say, Lord, look at my situation. Look at what's going on in my life, Lord. Where are you now, Lord? I need you right now. Anybody ever say, I need you every hour? Oh, bless me right now, my Savior. I come to thee. We don't sing those songs, but those songs have to understand we just I need you, baby. Sometimes you gotta tell the Lord I need you. I can't wait no longer. I need you right now, Lord, to come through in my stormy situation. Yeah, you said it now, you preach it. Let's go and experience the And about that time, that's when Jesus will show up and say, Peace, be still in your life. He can help you through that difficult time. And today, I want you to believe that God can do what you ask Him to. But I found out He can do even more than that. Amen. The text says that the disciples were exceedingly blessed by the fact that God did what He did. They feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be? That even the wind and the sea obey Him. I want you to believe that God can do things that you never thought He could do, amen? He can come through in a way that you never thought He could come through, amen? Uh, Ephesians chapter 3 is a text that we quote throughout our lives from time to time. We hear it said throughout our lives, but it says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now, <laughs> when do you need the Lord? When have you called, when do you, when you, when you call on Him? How long do you want to wait? You don't want to wait no longer. The word says, now unto Him. Who is able to do <laughs> exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask for things? Sometimes we, we put the word can ask, but I don't want you to put the word can ask in no more. This is the most of the word ask, amen? Ask him what you want. Tell him what's going on in your life, amen? Make it known. Don't wait no longer. Don't put it off. Don't think, well, uh, this is too small for the Lord or too big. No, go ahead and ask him, amen? Ask him what's going on in your life. He said, no matter what you ask, above all we ask or think. According to the power that works in us. Do you know that when you have Jesus in you, you have power in you? Help me, Holy Ghost. When you invite Jesus Christ into your heart, you have a power source that the sun, the moon, the stars, rain, storm, nothing can block it out, amen? You can have solar power, the clouds can block that, amen? If you have wind power or a steel day, when the wind power turns around and spinning, you don't have power. But inside of you is a source of power that will never run out. Amen? I want you to believe in that power that works. <laughs> it works inside of you, in the amen? To so him be the glory in the church, by Christ Jesus to all the nations, forever and ever. And that's what amen, amen. So that means that it was good for Brown Army. Hey. It's good for you. Hey. It was good for my own man. Hey. It's good for you. And since it's good for you, you might as well serve him today. Hey. That all the ways can know the goodness and the greatness and the glory of God. But some of you and I can tell a story, amen. amen. The good news is true. That Jesus Christ is still in the saving business. He's still in the healing business. He's still in the blessing business. He's still in the making a way business, amen. God is still able to make a way out of the way. I want you to believe it today. Yeah. We can keep on going. Yeah. Keep on trusting in God. Why don't you stand with me? The good of experience. Let us keep on going. Today I pray you give us another message today. As a reminder, to not give up on God. You know that He will bless us. He will take us through even a difficult time of life. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you can know Him. As I say, He's weak as the E is the ABC, the A is the E, the E is the repent of your sins. If you believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again, that your sins might be forgiven. And to see confessing. Lord, I'm going to pray a Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I admit that I've sinned against you. 
Lalu itu cinta ni mungkin dia macam macam dia. Kita semua mahu dia tu masih. Come to my heart and say, I believe that Jesus is your son and he died and rose again and my sins are forgiven. I accept you right now, my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Give me the Spirit, Lord. And then you got me for the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. You pray the prayer, you're not a child of God. God has a great plan for your life. You must have a pastor I'm already saved, but I'm going through some trials and tribulations. Today I want to remind you to keep on going, amen. He was born to, to go, even with things, with things as they are. Pandemic, life health, troubles, trials, tiredness, whatever you were going through, I want you to keep on going with things as they are. To keep on going in the middle of the storm. God has something great on the other side of the storm in your life. I want you to keep on believing in Him. And today, let's go and experience a miracle. God has a miracle for your life. He didn't stop doing miracles because the Bible was, is, is, is the Old Testament, the Old Testament, but He can still do a miracle right now for you. He can bless you in a way that you never thought He could do it. He can do exceedingly abundantly of the law we can ask what we would ever ask for today. So let's believe in today as we pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the reminder of His word that we need to keep on going. Help us to keep on going with things as they are. In the midst of the current circumstances of our society, help us to trust you and believe in you and the things that they are. Help us to keep on going in the middle of the storms of our life, oh God. And we will trust you and hold on to your unchanging hand and remember that you are with us in the midst of the storm. Help us to keep on going and to experience a miracle, to experience you coming through for us in a way that we may have never even considered, Lord. But we will see you do great and mighty things. Have your way in our lives. Continue to lead us. Continue to guide us. Continue to direct us. And we give your great name all the glory and the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We do have to give God thanks and praise for his goodness today. And we thank God for the message today. I hope and pray that you've been blessed by the words of God. Today he expresses today. I just want to say I really enjoyed the message for today. It was moving to my soul. And uh, one of the scriptures that I used in uh, first Peter, I remember watching all the comments. I don't even know what it was that I was going through. I remember telling my mother, and she wrote me a letter and put that to me. Don't don't think it's strange that you're going through this. Mm -hmm. And so that mm -hmm. scripture comes to me a lot of times. And I just thank Lord that I have a mother who uh, was able to see and yeah. mm -hmm. direct me in the right path. Mm -hmm. And I just thank the Lord for the message on today. It was great. Mm -hmm. Yes, I just thank you for that powerful message on this morning. I tell you, we need that reminder because we need, even though the storms of us, the boat with Peter and Jesus, but we have storms of life, as I shared with you, we shared earlier. Uh, we have to keep going, we keep moving forward. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> so let's keep moving forward and yeah. keep on going, no matter how difficult it's been, like the dark pandemic, things will look like we see you have kept moving forward. And we're still moving forward in who name? In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. So when you do it in his name, then you'll see the successful miracles of the great explorer. Something unusual happened. So I thank God for the powerful message. Thank God for the man of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just thank you, Pastor. Keep on. Keep on. Mm -hmm. Any other? If not, let's stand for Now I'm going to bring the love one saying that Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet of the Holy Spirit, may rest, rule, and abide within us, hope not evermore. Let the church say amen. 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 amen.